Hi there. I'm William Mohamed Chanza. I'm doing medicine and surgery at Levy Mountain University, and I'm going to take you through renal system. So, what is about a renal system? What causes renal system? What is the what is it concerned of? Or what are we supposed to really know about renal system? So now, uh, renal system was being done as a system in the previous years, but there are some changes. There are some changes in the way that you guys are going to be doing basics. So you do the anatomy, you do the anatomy of renal system, you do the embryology, embryology of the renal system, you do the physiology of the renal system, and then you do the pathology of the renal system, then you do the pharmacology, pharmacology, pharmacology. Of the renal system, then you do the what is biochemistry of the renal system, then you do what you call nephrology. nephrology. So, this is basically called a brain renal system, but uh, we call it nephrology. It's more like a course, it's a course on its own. So what is important is to know that who between this and sometimes, sometimes or uh, there are times where we'll be talking about everything concurrently. Maybe, for example, I didn't emerge. We mentioned the anatomical structures. Maybe we're doing physiology. We mentioned some anatomical structures. So that's how we are going to learn these things. Oops. All right. So now, today we're going to discuss the anatomy, the introduction to the renal system, the anatomy of the renal system. So this is just going to be basic. There's nothing that is difficult about that. The anatomy of the renal system because the organs that are involved there, they are just a few. They are not a lot that will give you a headache or what. They are very straightforward and they are simple. So they are going to the anatomy. Anyway. So, anatomy, we are interested in anatomy now. So, for anatomy, what are you supposed to know in anatomy? Number one, what is, what, is the, what is the complete system? What is the complete renal system? So, a complete renal system has the following structures. Number one, you have what you call the adrenal gland. The adrenal gland. Also known as, also known as supra renal gland. So we're going to do the functions of the adrenal gland as well as uh, the supra as well as uh, the structure, what it is made up of, the pathology that, that can arise from there. Two, remember the adrenal gland is just on top of the uh, of the kidneys, that is why it is called suprarenal gland. Suprarenal gland. So you have what is called the kidney. So the kidneys are going to be the second anatomical part that we are going to remember for the rest of our lives. The second one is we need to know what connects the kidneys to the blood because for that when that urine is made in the kidneys or in the kidney tube specifically, let's just put it simple. Let's say when that urine is made in the kidneys. It has to be filtered, it has to undergo all those processes, secretions, reabsorption. It has to go to the bladder. So now, what does it use for it to reach the bladder? It uses what we call the ureters. So I'm going to talk about the ureters. Well, what happens to the ureters? What, can, what, what pathologies can rise from there? Two, three, sorry, three, you reach the bladder already. The bladder. So the bladder as well. And then uh, the last one, but that, the last one, not the least, you are what you call the letra. So the letra is in the, in the male, it's in the. Okay, so we have uh, the letra, which is the last part. So the letra is only in the vagina for the female, it is only in the penis for the male. It's that last part that, uh, that is more like a passage for urine to come out. So that is the all about the letra. So what, what is about the suprarenal gland? So what is about the suprarenal gland? What are we supposed to know about the suprarenal gland? So the suprarenal gland also known as... Okay, for the suprarenal gland or the adrenal gland, what are we supposed to know? So this is the component of the hypothalamic, hypothalamic pituitary suprarenal axis. In short, what they are trying to tell you is that the suprarenal gland or the adrenal gland is connected to the hypothalamus. And the pituitary, because what happens is that remember the suprarenal gland is what secretes the adrenaline, the phenethrin, the cortisol hormones. So now for those hormones to be produced, they have to be a message coming from where? 
there has to be a message coming from the higher centers the hypothalamus. So the message is going to move from the thalamus, I mean from the hypothalamus to the pituitary pituitary, and then the pituitary is going to produce what is called the pituitary will produce what is called adrenocortropin hormone. So when the adrenocortropin hormone is released, what it does is that it will come and make the supraleno glands so that they can produce what the hormones that you need in endocrine physiology. So, in short, it is connected to the component of the hypothalamic pituitary suprarenal axis. That is responsible for coordination of stress response and metabolism. A good example is uh, cortisol. If you talk about cortisol, cortisol is a stress hormone. So, it is produced when you are stressed. So, it all starts from the hypothalamus and reaches there. So, that uh, the, the suprarenal gland can produce. Uh, Okay. So now, what else are we supposed to know that is important? We are supposed to know the region of anatomy, location of the location of the kidneys. Where are they located? So the kidneys they are located they are in the retroperitoneal space or at the back of the what you call the abdomen. The, the, is it the back of the abdomen? Something like that. But anyway, it's retroperitoneal organ which is located between uh, Tito to help you. Guys, this is very, very important to remember for the rest of your life. So, kidneys are located between G12 and L2. But since we know, now that we know that uh, the supraenal glands are located just above the kidneys, it means that the supraenal glands are above G12. That's all. So, for the supraenal glands, what is supposed to know? They are located above T12. They are located above T12. That is a very important point to remember. So just above the level of the, of the, of the last class, T12, they are surrounded by the renal fascia. We are going to talk about the renal fascia, but they are separated from the kidneys by what we call the perirenal fat. We'll talk about the layers of the, of the kidneys, and these are the structures that are separating the suprarenal gland from the kidneys. So the other thing is that these are yellowish, the trochoidonial space. So if you did your anatomy properly, you find that uh, from the TR, you find that. The the, 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 the supraenal gland is a yellow, yellow, it's, it's kind of yellow, so that is why they say they are yellowish retropeitonial organs. Just above the level of T12, and they are above the kidneys. And then they are surrounded by renal fascia, but they are separated from the kidneys by the peri renal fat, which we'll get to know very, very soon. So, each gland has an outer yellow cortex and the dark inner dark or inner dark brown medulla. What is that supposed to mean? It's simple and first word. So, if this, we assume that this is our supraenal gland. What we are saying is that it has a cortex, a yellow cortex. That is what, that is, what is giving that yellow medulla or supraenal gland the yellow kind of color. So, now after that, this is the this is a structure we're talking about. It's called the CL. So this is called the cortex. Cortex, yellow cortex. So we call it yellow cortex. And then the inside, inside is called cortex is brown. So for doctor, for the letter who is teaching you renal system anatomy, you need to know everything that I'm mentioning. So inside we call it metal. Metal. So, medulla or medulla, dark. So, the inside is dark, dark brown. But remember, outside is yellow. So, that is very, very important to remember. So, now, what, what are the dimensions of the supraenogram in general? The dimension, what does that mean? Meaning, the height, for example, let me give you an example of something. So, get this block. This is the block that I'm talking about. We're talking about the dimension of this block. So now this block, if you can see properly, it has the height, isn't it? It has the height. You have the breadth inside, or yeah, breadth. And then you also have what you call the. Uh, so you have the height, which is the, which is this one. You have the breadth, which is this one. Then you have uh, also the thickness. So the thickness is how thick it is. I know. I know you guys know these things. So you know the height of that. This is the height. This is the eye we are talking about. You have uh, also the length, meaning the how tall it is or short it is. That is the length 
for the height. So, so for the height is 50 millimeters. So this is the height for the superior plan. 50 millimeters. Approximately, approximately. You need to remember that these are just figures. And what they mean is that we are talking about a normal adult male, a 70 kg adult male. That's what is normal. So if the, the man, the normal adult man, is supposed to have a 50 millimeters height of, of the supernova plant. And then 30 millimeters in the breeding. So in the breeding is some, somewhere here, if you consider this diagram, this is the breeding and it's supposed to be uh, 30 millimeters. And then the thickness, which is this, this is the thickness, it's supposed to be what? It's supposed to be 10 millimeters, the thickness. And then the weight, the heaviness of that, that is the weight, it's supposed to be 5 grams. So that is why like what I wanted you guys to know about uh, the dimensions of the super aero plant. So you move from the dimensions, you go to the specific super aero plant, you go to the right one. What happens in the right one? What it is? What is it? What is so special about it? So the right super aero plant, remember when you say right, it's on the right kidney. When you say left, it's on the left kidney. So for the right super aero plant, it's pyramid in sh shaped or it's pyramid in shape. So its shape is more like that of a pyramid. So it keeps the upper part of the right kidney, meaning that if this is the kidney here, assumption again and that's assuming. So if this is the right kidney, it it keeps or caps whatever that uh, whatever that, I don't know how you pronounce this one, but it's caps for me. So it keeps the kidney, meaning it covers the kidney, the top of the kidney, which is the upper part of the right kidney. Relations. So what are the relations of uh, the super, right superior gland? What, does, what structures is it related to? Which one, which structures are covering the posterior and anterior? This is important. So anterior aspect. So if this is the superior gland, what is anterior to that? So you have the light lobe of the, of the liver. So the light lobe of the liver, remember, remember the, the liver, the light lobe of the liver is slightly bigger. It's, it's bigger than the, uh, the left pole of the liver. So what happens is that? It's, it, it goes like it goes like that, like if, if this is the liver, it's somewhere here on the right aspect. What happens is that that, uh, that part of this, that superior gland is going to be covered here. So if you come back, if you, if you turn and come back to the anterior, what's this, to the posterior aspect, if this is your liver, it covers, this is where the superior gland is, it will cover that part. So meaning it's the anterior for this is the, is the, what? Is the right lobe of the liver. And then posterior. So remember the diaphragm. So the diaphragm is around the structure that is posterior to the suprarenal gland. Specifically the right suprarenal gland. So now let's go to the so let's go to the left. The left one is quite tricky because it is not uh, so now yeah, we go to the left kidney. So if this is the left kidney, remember a kidney is bean, bean as in beans, bean shirt. So if this is the kidney, you get a piece of bean, you get to take it, it looks like this. So if this is a bean, so you take one bean and you've seen this structure. This structure is called hilum of the kidney. So the hilum of the kidney, that is why your neurovascular band enters. The blood vessels, the arteries they enter at this point is called a highland, a highland or a highland. So now if you see this is your highland of the kidney, what you are saying is that the arteries enter, the arteries and the veins enter at that point. So you have this is the left kidney. So for me the left supraeno gland. So for the left supraeno gland, the shape is not the pyramid. The pyramid is for the right. So for the left the, the shape is crest Crescentic in shape, you look at that structure at one time. It extends along the medial border of the kidneys from the upper port to the island. So it is like this. It extends from the this is the medial border of the kidney. This is medial, this is lateral. So the medial border, it will be like this. This is how the supraenal gland is. The left supraenal gland is. Let me see the So this is the left supraenal Renal gland. So it covers part of the medial part of the kidney. That is it. So it extends along the medial border of the kidneys from the upper pole. It's on the, from the upper pole there up to the eyelids. The eyelids, remember I told you, this structure. 
this structure warehouse is in the blood vessels, what the artery is there, etc. etc. That is what uh, the one cyst is. So the other thing is that this is, this is the neurovascular band of the artery. We have the artery, the vein, and the nerve. So now we are saying it extends from the upper cord, upper cord there, and then until the osseous, until the hilum of the kidneys. It's in straightforward durations. The anterior part of this, what covers it anterior? So we're talking about anterior here, e. this is the anterior part of the kidney. What's there on the anterior part? So the pancreas, you have the pancreas first, second, you have the lesser, lesser sac, lesser sac of what? Of the stomach. And then the stomach itself, posterior of the diaphragm, is two of the diaphragm, posterior is the other side. There is a diaphragm there. There is a diaphragm. So for this one and this one there, the posterior part is the diaphragm. The anterior part is for this one for the right side is the right lobe of the liver. And I explained to you what it means. I explained to you in a simple terms. And then for this one, the post the, the anterior is the pancreas, the sac of the stomach, and the stomach itself. Then the anterior, the posterior is it's the diaphragm. That's the that, those are the relations. And guys, I can tell you that these are important. You need to know the shape, you need to know the relations, you need to know how the blood supply is coming to the uh, this thing. So I think so I think so when you come this side, well we left something when writing the anterior part for the anterior relations of the right supra lenal grind. You have the right, right lobe of the liver. Two, you have the inferior vena cover. Very, very important to remember. So anatomy, anatomy is very special. When you do the structure, you go through the structures, you always have to talk about something that is applying it. So you need to know what is applying it. It's more like this is a girl who has a, a, a boyfriend. What is the boyfriend supposed to do? They have to support the girlfriend by providing something to the girlfriend, by helping her with anything financially, mentally, etc. etc. That's what happens in anatomy. So since we've talked about the structure or the organ which is called suprarenocrine, what are the things, what are the arteries or the veins and the nerves and the lymphatics that go to the suprarenocrine? So the arteries that supply in each gland are three in number. You have the superior, middle, and the inferior suprarenal arteries. Guys, is that difficult? Superior, middle, and inferior. Because it's going to ask you, it's going to ask you to tell you the arteries that are, or the, the, the blood supply to the kidneys, I mean to the suprarenal gland, and you will be able to, you need to be able, you need to, 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 to support yourself, you need to back yourself. Alright, so I was just trying to make things clear for you guys. So for the blood supply, for the blood supply, when we say blood supply, we mean the the arteries. The other day I mentioned that blood supplies, I mean the kidney, the veins I said, they are supplying. The veins do not, do not supply or they are branching. We don't say veins are branching, we say the tributaries, tributaries of main veins, the main, main of major veins. So you know, what is important is to know where these arteries are coming from because you can ask you to tell you uh, the, the blood supply uh, for the suprarenogram. So, superior suprarenal artery. It's the major one. Second is the middle, then of the inferior. Straightforward, but we need to know where they're coming from. So the superior suprarenal artery comes from the phrenic artery. The phrenic artery is that artery that supplies uh, the diaphragm. Then uh, the middle, the middle suprarenal artery, it is the branch of uh, the abdominal aorta. And then, uh, and then you have the last one, which is the inferior suprarenal artery. This is a branch of the renal artery, which is the artery that supplies. Uh, the, the kidneys. How about the vein? So for the veins, a single vein emerges from from the hilum of each gland and drains into the inferior vena cava on the right and into the left renal vein on the left. This is straightforward. That anatomy is very important. So we are saying that for the veins, we have a single vein emerging from the hilum of each gland and it drains into the inferior vena cava on the right and into the left renal. So in short, what is happening is that you have what you call a vein that is coming from the inferior vena cava on the left. Am I right? No, on the right. 
So it's, it's there's a vent that is coming from. For example, let me give let me give you an example. I think it will make sense when you do that. So we are saying that if this is the supply gland, it are also the eye lamp. If this is, if I just assume, it are also the eye lamp. Where are those arteries and veins emerge from? So we are saying that a vein that drain there, one will go here on the right side and drain the inferior vena cava. And then for the left supply nerve gland, its vein will drain the renal vein. Renal vein. Guys, this is the only magical. Thing about anatomy, you need to know how these things are, how these things differ. For example, we we have said that the vein for the left renal, for the left adrenal gland, drains the inferior vena cava. The right, or oh, sorry, the right one, the right one drains the inferior vena cava. Or the left vein that drains the supra renal gland drains or is connected to the renal vein. That's all. Lymph drainage, the lymph drain drains into the lateral aortic nodes. I don't know, I, I unfortunately I can't demonstrate this. The nerve supply, you need to have the nerve supply. Remember, we said it is connected to the hypothalamus. How is the message supposed to move? Is it through blood only or through the nerves as well? So, the nerve supply is through what you call the preganglionic sympathetic fibers, and we know what the preganglionic is. So, when you say preganglionic fibers, we know by now these are the neurons that are before the ganglia and they are originating from the central nervous system and then they just surprise I told you I told you that this one they just go direct into the and do the, the adrenal medulla or the suprarenal gland. So you have the pregandronic sympathetic fibers. They are derived from the splanc splanchnic nerves to supply the gland. So they are, they are, they are derived from the splanchnic nerve nerves and they are pregandronic sympathetic fibers. So in say pregandronic you have already defined what that is and it's sympathetic because I told you that when there is Whenever there is stress condition, whenever there is fight or flight, there, are, there, there has to be a message that has to move from the hypothalamus to the adrenal gland, or also known as the suprarenal gland, so that it can produce those stress hormones, the epinephrine, cortisol, etc., etc. Most of these nerves end in the medulla of of the gland. So the storage you do it on your own. Okay, let me tell you. Right, right. So for the histology, for the histology of the suprarenal gland, what are we supposed to know? So we need to know that the suprarenal gland is divided into three areas that are important. Those areas are important in the way that they serve a specific or unique functions. Each has a certain role they play in the body. So for example, if we talk about, if we assume that this is a histology of the suprarenal gland, or rather the adrenal gland, this is it. We have the caps, the covering of that gland. So, if, it, for example, I get this mouse of mine. So, if this is a covering, this covering is going to act as what, as the caps. Then, when we open it, we are going to see the cortex. So, when we open it, we are going to see the cortex. This is the cortex now. So, the cortex is the second layer, right? Then, after the cortex, you have the medulla, also known as the adrenal medulla, because this is called adrenal gland. So, you have the adrenal medulla and the cortex. These are the basic two structures, historical structures that people have to remember. Number one, this is not this is not considered the structure, but it's a covering that is covering the entire superior gland. And after that covering, hope we will move it. You have the cortex. Then the cortex, you have the medulla. So now we will start by talking about the cortex because we know we need to know the physiology of the cortex. We need to know the physiology of this. So how are we going to know the physiology of the cortex? So it's simple and straightforward, guys. Very simple and straightforward, guys. We go to this, we come to this side. So, so number one, we have the caps, remember? After the caps, you have the cortex. This is the cortex. So now, the cortex is further divided into three, three zones. Into our main zones? Three zones. So, the cortex is further divided or classified into three zones, which are called zona, 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 zones. So, you have the first zone, which is called glomerulus. The second zone, which is called fasciculata, and then the, the third zone, which is called the zona reticularis. These zones are very, very important in the way that they also serve a special function, the specific, fun the specific function for the cortex. So you have this entire structure here. Thus, this is the histology of the, the cortex. This is just the cortex. 
the context that went to a private school. This is a cortex. This is just a cortex. So the cortex is made up of three. There is a mnemonic to why you remember this. From the outside going inside. From the outside going inside. You remember it using the mnemonic called G F R. So you will do G F R is also known as glomerular filtration rate. So we shall use G F R to remember the layers of the cortex. So zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, and zona reticularis. These are the layers of the cortex, and that's how we remember them by using the mnemonic called G F R, glomerular filtration rate. So we use G F R. To remember the layers of the cortex, to remember the layers of the cortex. So from the outside going inside, you have the glomerulosa, meaning that after the capsule, you have the glomerulosa brought by the fasciculata, then brought by the reticularis. So each serve a specific function. So this is the arrangement, if you if you assume. So now if this, this is the capsule of the glomerulosa, fasciculata, and the reticularis in. So you have one, two, three. We're moving from the superficial, meaning moving from the outside, sorry. This is the outermost of the cortex. The cortex is part of the adrenal medulla histologically. So, after the cortex, remember we said this is the cortex, huh? This is the cortex. So, the cortex is divided into the three structures the glomerulosa, fasciculata, and the reticularis. After that, you have the adrenal medulla, which is the green one, the one that has been drawn from the board there. So now, this is important histologically because histology is more similar to, is quite similar to physiology. So we need to talk about the physiology as well. What all these zones, what do they produce? What are they specialized in? So now let's go to the functions. All right, so now we said the, uh, the adrenal gland is divided, histologically is divided into two important structures. You can say three. Starting from the capsule, then you have the cortex, which is the second one. But this cortex is very specific. We don't call it the cortex of the brain. It's called adrenal cortex. And then this one is adrenal medulla. That is why it can be very relevant to put adrenal when you are drawing it. So you can say adrenal cortex. There you can say adrenal medulla. But you don't confuse yourself with the cortex that you have there, as well as the medulla of the adrenal, which you have in the brainstem. So the functions of the Adrenal cortex. Remember, we said the, that the cortex is divided into three structures. Glomerular filtration rate is the mnemonic. So, glomerulosa, fasciculata, and reticularis. So, for the glomerulosa, we are going to talk about the functions or the hormones it produces. So, before we talk about that, these are the major functions, the main, main functions of the adrenal, of the cortex, adrenal cortex. So, number one is sugar, and you know how to control sugar or glucose. Number two is salt, and we know it controls salt very soon. And then three is sex, and we know it controls the sexualism of the human beings. So now remember what I told you the cortex is divided into three structures. So after the capsule of the cortex, so this, co this cortex here is divided into three structures. The first structure is glomerulosa, second is fasc fasciculata, and the third is the reticularis. And remember when you complete the cortex, this is the entire cortex. When you complete it after the adrenal cortex, the adrenal cortex, you have the metal which is coming in. And then before it, the adrenal cortex, you have the caps, and these are three structures that are forming one, forming the the storage of the cortex, but don't put the caps when explaining. I feel like it's not necessary, but it is, it is important anyways. So for the zona glomerulosa, what does it do? It produces what you call mineral corticoids. Mineral Corticoids. Why are they called mineral corticoids? It's very simple and straightforward. It's mineral. Minerals meaning you have potassium, sodium, etc. etc. So mineral corticoids. But remember the corticoid, where is it coming from? From the hormones that we talked about in the endocrine system, you have this hormone which is called ACTH. A C T H. It's called adrenal cortical tropin hormone. This is the hormone that is produced by the anterior pituitary gland, specifically the corticotrope cells. They will produce this hormone, and this hormone is what is going to stimulate the cortex so that it can produce these HALA hormones. But you, you, you've seen it's very unique, it's very, very unique, guys. So, so the zona, for the zona of 
it produces what you call the mineral corticoids. So the corticoids is coming from the canal, the cortisol. Anyway, let me not say the cortisol, but from the adenocortical cortical. So you have the cortical somewhere. So it's so you have the mineral corticoids. The mineral corticoids, this is the these are hormones that are that have to do with that. the minerals. The very, very important in fact the hormone that they refer to when they say mineral corticoid is it's aldosterone. So aldosterone, what does it do? Aldosterone, it binds on the receptors in the kidney tubules. And when it binds there, what it does is that it increases the ENAC, epithelial channels. So when, when those epithelial channels are increased, they will, they will absorb more sodium. And they are absorbing sodium water of form. And that, that is what I say. It is called uh, what is adenocortico corticoids. Sorry. So it's a mineral corticoid because it condenses the re reabsorption of sodium. Then potassium will get to know this as we go in the de depth of these things. So that, that's all about the zona glomerulus. What is the take home? The take home is that the glomerulus that produces what? Aldosterone. The zona fasciculata produces what? Glucocorticoid. Glucose means glucose. So glucocorticoid. So glucocorticoid is what? Glucocorticoid is cortisol, that's the hormone that is, that is referred to whenever they say glucocorticoids. So what does cortisol do on the body? It does the multiple functions that we know. So from the biochemistry, we know that it antagonizes the, the effects of what is of um, insulin. It has a negative effect on the other hormones. It is a stress hormone indeed. So all those four functions, we'll talk about them in physiology. So that is the function of cortisol and it is it is referred to as a glucocorticoid. Glucose means glucose, that's why it controls the homeostasis of glucose like that. So this is the function for sugar. Here we talked about sodium, that is salt. Then you have the zona reticularis, the deepest layer of the cortex, of the adrenal cortex. It's called the zona reticularis. So, so for the zona reticularis, it produces the hormones which are called sex steroids. For example, you have these androgens, androgens, for example, estrogen, as well as the precursors, I didn't say testosterone, but I said the precursors, meaning something that forms the testosterone somewhere. So you have the precursors of the testosterone as well. But what is important is to remember that the zona reticularis produces the sex steroids, such as all these androgens, which are called, for example, estrogen, and they participate in the sexual function, and that is why the sex function is coming from there from the adrenal cortex functions. So that is basically the introduction for the adrenal uh, cortex. So on the other of the adrenal cortex, remember, the adrenal cortex is this one, you go to the adrenal medulla. So the adrenal medulla is different. It's different from the medulla that you know, the one that is in the brainstem. This adrenal medulla is specialized in the production of what you call uh, catecholamines. Catecholamines, and this is how they are produced. The first one is always dopamine, followed by non epinephrine Remember, the epinephrine is referred to also as uh, no adrenaline. Then you have epinephrine, also called adrenaline. So these are called catecholamines. Topamine, no adrenaline, and adrenaline. That is why this is stress. When you are stressed, whenever you are stressed, the sympathetic nervous system is going to be active. When the sympathetic nervous system is active, remember we said the innovation to the cortex is through the preganglionic sympathetic fibers. And we said, it produces a certain uh, neurotransmitter on the adrenal medulla so that the adrenal medulla can produce these stress hormones, the epinephrine, adrenaline, so that to become aware of the environment, etc. etc. So now, so now the embryology. So for the embryology, you guys will read further. I know it's, it's difficult, but it's not even difficult, it's straightforward. So that you need to know that the two different parts of the of the supraenal gland are derived from different uh, and the, oh, can I call them germ layers? Yes. So they are derived from the different germ layers. The cortex and the medulla develop from two different regions. The cortex, this one, it's mesoderma in origin. Mesoderma, you know the mesoderms. These you guys are still primitive to these things. You still remember these things. So you, you can't forget what uh, the the medulla, the what the mesoderm is. So it develops from the posterior abdominal wall. Very simple and straightforward. How about the medulla? The medulla is ectodermal in origin. So the adrenal medulla, this one, right? Adrenal medulla is ectodermal. 
wow the cortex is in uh mesoderm and we need to remember that the ectoderm the medulla this one is one of the things that are derived from the from the crest neurocrest cells you guys are very much much more than with the neurocrest cells so the neurocrest cells they were the ones that are produced in the in the oasis in the from the ectoderm the ones that form the part of the medulla adrenal medulla is in short what you are supposed to remember is that the cortex is mesoderm the medulla is ectoderm Okay, so the other things you guys are going to read on your own because I've simplified everything for you guys. So what is the talk home for everything? So we've done the introduction, we've talked about the organs of the uh, of the renal system. We've talked about uh, the, we start from the suprarenal gland, we went to the kidney, we said after the kidney you have the ureter, the ureter you have the bladder, after the bladder you have the urethra. So we've today we've done the the what's this? The suprarenal gland or the adrenal gland. We've talked about its functions, we've talked about its embryology, we've talked about the histology, we've talked about the structure that it is made up of. It is made up of the cortex and the adrenal medulla. And then the adrenal cortex is divided into, into three. You have the glomerulosa, fascicular, as well as the reticularis. The mnemonic is GFR. And then we've also talked about some, uh, the functions of each layer of the cortex. From there, we've talked about uh, the hormones that are produced from each layer of the cortex, and then from there, we've talked about the adrenal medulla itself. And then the, the adrenal medulla is the one that the inner mass. It's, it's, it's kind of uh, part of the sublime gland itself, the histological structure, but inside the adrenal medulla, and this is where the innervation, the, the pre ganglionic uh, fibers that we talked about, this is where they just uh, come in and then innervate that part so that it's able to produce the catecholamines. The dopamine, epinephrine, and the epinephrine. What else? We talked about the embryo. We said the embryo of these two is different. The cortex is mesoderm. The medulla is ectoderm. And that's all. Thank you so very much for your time. I really appreciate God bless you. Okay, guys. So the other thing is that now I have a very good drain on my board. And you never knew what <laughs> was in charge and the one was uh, uh, drawing the same drawing that you see. That is all the board. So the one who was responsible for that, the one who has helped me drive this thing was uh, his, uh, Dr. Mtambo Lloyd. He's a very good friend of mine, my guy, I really appreciate your work. This will help some people out there. So, so very grateful for your work. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right. Okay, bye. Bye, guys. Bye.